quite happy to be there, the last talk. Uh, tonight it's party time, it would be very nice. I have already my gift for to drink tonight, or to drink in Paris, I don't know. But uh, before, I will try to, to explain how oh, I can see um, typeface design, uh, design in particular. Um, on, yes, let, let's start. Uh, the words are something we use every day because we have to read them and uh, it's a good way to keep, uh, to keep the memory of people even when they, they die. Uh, with, with the words, with the text, you, are, you can be sure that you can record uh, people's mind uh, after their death. Um, when, you, when you design something, the first you have some true of what you want to design but the first expression of your design is to use words to describe what you want to do before any design or any drawings on anything um, anything on paper on the screen um, so between the between what you have in your mind on on the real thing uh, be, be, between the abstraction of of your mind on, on on the tangibility of things you have the words so I've said before, uh, human invent <laughs> try to find a way to communicate, so they use a voice, and then um, very quickly they found a way to record something much, much more easier than with the last iPhone, whatever, to record that invention of writing. It was very, very uh, handy f things because with writing you don't have, you don't need to have any. Uh, last um, OS uh, version of, the, of your um, iPhone or computer, you can keep the writing for a very long time. And then, um, and you know that, especially in this part of Italy, um, you, some people invented um, typography on Roman typeface. This one is a uh, one by Nicolas Janson in, um, in, in the beginning of, of invention of printing. And we can see that this kind of typeface, even today, are quite legible for our eyes and it's already dating back uh, 500 years ago. So try to read a piece of, of, of text or whatever from a computer of you from the 80s or something like that, it's very difficult to read anything. But the typeface, yes, it's easy to, to read even long time after uh, it was designed. Um, when, you, when you design typeface, the first thing, uh, um, the first rule you have is to try to address some technical problems. Uh, so I have to design a typeface because it has to be used in small size on telephone books or because it will be used on, on a big truck uh, that you can see on the motorway, uh, crossing the motorway. So, but, but this is quite limited to, to, my, to my opinion because just imagine as a graphic designer designing, designing a logotype because it's on, on the truck so you have to be square and very large. I, I don't see the point to do that. When you design a logotype, identity or something like that, you don't, you don't address first the technical problem but more connotation on, on the client needs or, 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 or the context of the design, so that the first thing that the cultural aspect is much more important than the technical limitation, who generally are, are, are over a couple of years after. So, um, in the 70s, um, there was a, a guy called Ladislas Mandel. We have designed a lot of, of typeface for telephone books, and it started with Galfra for Italian directories, early 70s. And this guy um, was, was able to design in very, very small size. So on the left, you have the original design with this famous ink track that, that young people love. And after, you have the bitmap version done by hand at the time. But um, what is interesting on this design, it's in, in one way, he's able to address the technical problem. But also, we have to know that uh, Ladislas was able to design each of the typefaces I've done for Europe or even US was designed to address the difference of, of the way we set uh, telephone director directories depending on the country. So if you, go, if you have to design a typeface for Portugal directories, the name, uh, the, the, the caps will be more narrow with a heavy serif on quite 
good contrast, but when it have to design something for Belgium, it would be a sans serif like you have done for US. So it changed the design because of the of the context, because of of the cultural reference of the people. Why? It's simply because he thinks that in telephone in telephone directories, when the people have to look to such thing, it's not the case anymore. Nobody have printed uh, telephone directories today. But at the time, when people have to find a doctor or something very urgent, they probably not the people who read the most, so they have to, to have the accessibility or something very present to their eyes to be, to be sure that these people can, can read something is easier. So this is quite interesting because it's at 1.5 uh, 1, 1 millimeters. It's quite uh, very legible. Um, so when I have designed Parisine, um, uh, Ladislas was still alive, and I have some discussion with him uh, about that, what to do on how to, uh, how to design such, such kind of typeface for, for, um, for a network of, of transport and things like that in Paris. And, and then, um, in, in, in this period also, I have the honor to have the, uh, the visit of Summerstone. Uh, that was the first time it was at home, um, and I recall very much that in, it was just after this presentation, it was in August of this same year, and I showed the typeface to, to Summerstone and I explained that, okay, the typeface they used before was Helvetica, and uh, they wanted a new typeface called still Helvetica, the same as Helvetica. And I say, no, you don't have to design a typeface like Helvetica because it's very boring and not legible, whatever. So I came with this design on, and I said to Summer Stone, I recall of this discussion on, my, on, on the dedicated room where my studio was at the time, and say, you see uh, Sumner, this typeface uh, is made in reference to Johnston typeface on Roman capitals, and on, on, uh, on, um, Sumner told me, yes, it's good, you have to continue on this direction, that's the good way to design good typeface. So thank you, Summer, where you are, he's not there. Um, so that was the first presentation, and then um, you can see the difference with the red letters, where the fin final one. And that's my first, um, my first um, meeting with Helvetica, and it's when I begin to hate Helvetica. Uh, so in many, in many situations in my life as type designer, I have to redesign something to be better than Helvetica. But this one is, was a little strange because um, the idea was uh, because of the the constraint of, of this piece of design. RATP at the time used a lot of typeface. Uh, they used um, the Metro typeface by um, Adrien Frutier from the 70s, all caps only. And then um, they adopt Helvetica for certain part of the, of the um, transport station uh, signage system uh, for the bus because it was done by Jean Vidmer, so he used Helvetica. And it was uh, early 90s, so in early 90s, the typeface available on, on, on different software where mostly, you know, Arial, Helvetica on the Mac, and very few more, but not so much. And if you have to recall also that to order a typeface at the time was to, to, to call someone and after to send a fax to order the typeface and to say we are on the Mac or on the PC to receive the floppy, to, to pay, to have, a, to, to have a, a guy who come back with a, with a floppy disk. To, you want to be sure that the floppy disk open on the computer. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. And then after a few days, you have the typeface. So it wasn't easier as, as today. So uh, at RATP, they wanted to have uh, they wanted to have a license for Helvetica, but it wasn't very clear what to do on how it works, uh, because in their case, they wanted to have a typeface that everybody can purchase easily, but their own version, to be sure that it's, it's very the same typeface everywhere on, on the metro. So it's why they came to me and said, we want an Helvetica, but more condensed, more economical. And I say, yes, you, want, you have to do something else. And they say, yes, but we are not able to have a different typeface. They say, OK, it's, it's between you and me. We know, we can see that it's a different typeface. But for, for the president of RATP, you can say, that's um, or Helvetica. And nobody, <laughs> nobody will notice that it's not Helvetica. So they say, okay, we will uh, purchase the typeface, and the deal was done. 
um, later they begin to use the typeface everywhere on the bus, on the metro, on the signage, on, on, on maps, on things like that. And even for advertisements, they begin to use uh, uh, Parisian too. It was a sort of democratic typeface because the typeface was designed first for the signage system. And more and more the people at RATP want to use the typeface for their own application. So more and more gradually the typeface was used everywhere. And then, a couple of years later, we have done uh, several versions of, of Parisine. And then we have these uh, fabulous new things on the bus that you can have everywhere in the world that the LED system. With the LED system, it's very useful because you can change the direction of the buses very quickly. You just uh, key a text on, on you have a different direction. But the problem is that uh, uh, these people who, who implement the typeface uh, doesn't know what is accessibility or even design or even letter forms. So you can see they, have, they try to design something, but it's nonsense. OK, they, 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 they respect the rules, make the letter bigger, it will be more legible. But you, you have to realize that in Paris, at least, but in many, many cities in the world, is the same. You have five train stations on guard stations. So when you have the train station, on, you have to read the same word all the time. The time you read gar, uh, the bus already moves because you are not able to see um, which station you have to go. But it's very big, so more legible. But in fact, it's not at all. So make the logo bigger, make the typeface bigger, not work all the time. So we have a lot of discussion about that, what we can do, and the answer was to do uh, caps and lowercase, quite narrow, to be sure that the, the maximum quantity of text appear on the buses, um, and try also to find a way to list all the stations in Paris and to find the, the most common um, quantity of text, to be sure that we will, in most of the case, have a static text. So like that, even if it's in one line or two lines, People can read the text when the bus moves, but the text doesn't move, so it's much more legible, even it's smaller. And also, uh, we discover uh, during uh, the design of, or the process of design of the typeface that uh, normally when you design typeface today, it's quite e easier because you have your computer, you open your, your software to, to check all the design, and it's easy, you have the basic curves, and you have uh, immediately in context what happening. But in such case, you have to design something with dots. It was done in front lab, this, this typeface on the, on the left. So it's basic curve. After you do a bitmap version of it, based on the first you have for, for presentation, and then you put on the machine and you have another completely different aspect, especially when the typeface or the, the text move. It's, it changes the weight on the, on the light and even when it's dark or when it's when it's at, at e on the evening or on the morning or with a lot of sun, it changed the aspect of, of the typeface completely on legi legibility of the typeface. Um, after, it was important to, to do tests with users, but I don't like tests with users. Users are really stupid. They don't know what to do. <laughs> and we are here, designers, to say to the user, you have to go on that direction. They don't know. If you ask a question, it's like marketing and things like that. You know, they ask always, does this packaging is better than this one? I say, you know, it's like politi politics. Do you think that this candidate is better for this reason? The question already have the answer and generally is not the one, the one you expect. So uh, we, we try to have some question to make the thing democratic and yes, user can have their vision. On, um, on, on, uh, sadly, okay, they say, yes, the new typeface is better than the other one. On one of the, one of the questions the most important for me, uh, um, at least the one we ask to the user, the rest we don't ask to them. But do you prefer that the text is um, it's, uh, on the left um, uh, with, uh, with the numerals or have to be center? Obviously, they, they ask to be center. It's really stupid because center, sometimes you have uh, short words and it's so disconnected with the number, uh, the numeral of, of the line, so it doesn't make sense. But you know, a user like that, when you ask a question like that, is that the guy who open word on, yes, title, center. After the text, yes, a block of text. He don't know why, but it's like that. So he says center. But he, he don't have any, any through of why he have to be center. It's just because his father telling me he have to be center. He don't know. Users are stupid, really. <laughs> um, 
so the typeface continue to grow and we have a um, narrow typeface and condense uh, whatever so we have to to redo um, to do a new version of it uh, uh, last year and for that i have to i wanted to redesign or to use the design of jean vinmer jean vinmer was a fabulous designer in in france to do corporate identity visual identity of museum and many things he changed Paris. He's one of the Swiss who changed Paris. But at, a, at the time, he used Helvetica to, to do his very beautiful poster. But I have redesigned the poster. I mean, I've done the basic version of the poster. Use the same, same color, but with my typeface. Because there, is, there was no French typeface early 70s. But now it's possible to have a more Parisian typeface for Parisian design, even if it's a Swiss. Like any foundry, we have a website to sell the, the fonts. On, okay, it works. On you have uh, many ways to present the typeface. Even we are on the current way to to redesign the, the the website. But long time ago, before the website or, or before the, the high quality screen, we, we have the type specimen, the printed specimen. But in back in 2004, we begin to have one size of specimen, the one you have on on the tote bag uh, yesterday. Because my printer had this size of, his machine was that size, and he had only two colors. So that was, it started the idea. It was just the piece of paper, nothing else. And since 2004, we continue to produce specimen. And for, for a Parisian, I wanted to ask not a Parisian designer or even me to design a, the specimen, but someone who doesn't know the history of Paris on connection with transportation system. So I asked uh, Luc Eiman at Pentagram in, in New York to do that. So yeah, they have done a very beautiful specimen with the two parts of the family. And um, when Fournier, the same, when Fournier was, was out, in this case, it was Stéphane Elbaz who did the, the beautiful uh, design of the specimen. And again, another one by uh, Laurent Stopkoff at Mucho, who did also to renovate a little bit an old typeface family was Le Monde Specimen. So, this typeface doesn't exist like that because it's just the assemblage made by the graphic designer. And then, uh, at the end of, of last year, I, I saw that it can be good to have all these specimens because we asked all these designers what we can do to, to, to make all the specimens together. I don't like catalog of typeface because when you produce a catalog, it's already over next month. Uh, you have a new typeface, so it's not on the catalog. You have to reprint it. It doesn't work. So the idea, the idea to have always different specimen, uh, di different design, but together. It was very simple. One morning I wake up, I say, yes, we have to find a way to put all these specimens and to work with very, this other very nice printer around us. We use very old techniques, so it was a good, uh, good way to, to do um, a sort of leaflet to put all of them. Um, Typeface specimen, sadly, you have to be. Uh, there is a problem with the layout here. Yeah? Okay, whatever. Um, typeface are very good because you can go on the foundry website uh, or big distributor on, on to find the right typeface for the job you do as a graphic designer. And, and you can probably find the, the typeface to express what you, what you need or the technical constraint or a lot of different things. And, and even the right choice of typeface. The typeface is not is not right because is is typeface who um, who gives the the connotation of the brand or or, or the company, but is the use of the typeface who make who makes the typeface as a typeface from the company. So it takes time to be sure that the typeface belongs to someone who uses it. It's not the reverse. Paul Rond have a, a text about that, with, about corporate identity in the 60s. And it, for logotype, it worked like that for him, and for typeface for me too. Um, and we know that, um, for sure, uh, typography and colors make a, a brand, especially in politics. You can see uh, these days that when a politician in campaign, you have a lot of campaign recently in Brexit, Trump, in France, or many other countries. And, and you can see that on social network, when a politician has to communicate, what he uses is not the logotype of his campaign. It's not the case anymore, as it was 10 years ago. Now he uses just a set of colors on a way to have a photography on a typeface. And that's the brand, that's the guy. So the typeface are really the core of, of any identity. Um, 
A long time ago, uh, in this publication, a uh, font and function made by Adobe in the beginning, um, they, they, they wanted to show to the, to the people early 90s that we can do something quite interesting with typeface. So is that the same content, but they change the display, they change the typeface on, on the layout and it changed completely the meaning of, of, of the content. Um, back at, at the time of uh, Louis XIV, Louis Le Grand, um, it seems that this, this king, like many others before, but this one was quite interesting because he decided to have his own typeface. So, he, you know, generally we say, yeah, the first corporate typeface is Johnston or thing like that. But in fact, the first corporate typeface is the one made for Louis XIV, Louis XIV. So for him to have his identity was to have the architecture, the Chateau de Versailles, to have the arms and colors and palette of, of things, of of elements everywhere, on horses, on, on, the, on, on the textile, on the, on the piece of furniture, even on women fashion, you have the, the, the arms of, of the king, so everybody have, have the, the identity of, of the king. And on this case, this typeface was quite uh, unique because uh, to be sure that it was his typeface, I tried to use that, yes. You can see there is a, the, the small piece of DNA of the king was this serif on some of the letters. Yes. Um, so the shape of the shape of the typeface can be it's a real piece of design. Uh, here you can see this example from the 70s. At the time they wanted to have a new typeface for a new fast metro called the called the RER, the I don't know, the Rapid Express Regional or yeah, something like that. But it's the worst mode of transportation in, in Paris this day because it's old now. But at the time, they want to say to the, peop to the people, you will have a new transportation system in Paris much faster. You can go much far away very quickly. And then they wanted to show the future to the people saying that the new transportation system. So they wanted to have a sans serif, rounded sans serif to express this future. But in fact, when you look to that, it was done by Roger Talon, um, the designer who ordered the typeface to uh, Albert Botton. But when you look to Roger Talon design, piece of design, he have done a lot of piece of design like uh, Pierre Paulin in early 70s and end, end of 60s. You can see that piece of design are completely round out, uh, the shape are round. So we can see that the typeface like the shape of the furniture or any piece of design um, answer to the same problematic of, you know, it's sort of holistic way to, 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 to make the design um, clear everywhere, everywhere, from the words to any piece of design. To be sure that every, everyone has the same uh, voice, uh, the same turn for, for the people who use the product or, or be on the same place. Um, in Dave Hades, um, there is, he have a, a website called, a blog, a blog called Type in the Future. On this, on this blog, you have a lot of analysis of um, um, sci-fi movies on how they use a typeface on piece of design. And it's interesting to see that uh, he, he, he came to the conclusion that they use a lot of Eurostil, Euro the Italian typeface from the 50s by Novares, um, the microgramma on Eurostil. And, and you can see on all these, um, these movies, uh, when we look when we watch the movie for the first time, uh, we express the future. At the time, we say, yes, that's the future. But 10 years after, we realize that it's just the expression of the time when, when the, the movie was done. So a sci-fi movie from the 60s looks really 70s or even 80s, look 80s on, on, on everything. So it's very difficult to, to address the future or to see the future. It's impossible. Um, people. There is a lot of, of, of uh, writing about architecture. On, uh, with architecture, we can, uh, we can try to find, um, to, to, to have a discourse of civilization, of, of the shape of, of, the, of the building, or, or what will be the evolution, and things like that. Um, and you have such books on publication everywhere. For typeface, it doesn't exist. Even for architecture, you have Lego for young people, probably uh, Mother, um, yes on father use the Lego things, but you don't have a Lego with Helvetica on, uh, yeah, you have to build with logo, uh, Lego on Helvetica, it doesn't exist. 
they, they have only a piece of, of furniture or piece of building like that. And we can also do a comparison between typeface architecture or certain piece of design. Um, when you look to, um, to Le Corbusier uh, um, house uh, on the left, it seems to be a contemporary piece of architecture today. But uh, when, you, when you know that it was done at the same time as Futura, with also a, a typeface that you want to use every day today, it looks really contemporary on some things that you can still use for many years. But when you look to the cars from the same period, the car, nobody wants to go on such car, such car or probably a Sunday because there is, a, there is um, an event about all cars. So what I can say is um, typeface are more sustainable than cars, so stop to buy car or buy, buy more typeface um, instead. It will be better. At long term, it proves that it works better. Um, at the time of, of the launch of the future in, in France called Europe, they wanted to have a, a specimen to say to the people, this typeface is a typeface from the present day or for the future. So they wanted to, to show the, the best, the most modern or mo most futurist car at the time. And you can see the car at the time. Today, again, it, it doesn't work. Frutiger tried to use the same analogy to say that his Frutiger is much better than than the old Futura and the old Helvetica. He hates Helvetica also, I'm sure. Even his Swiss. And, um, and so he, he said, yes, look at this. Helvetica is like this old car. Nobody wants to use it. And, and Futura is look like this old car. Nobody wants to use it. But in fact, it, the, this thing doesn't work because today we want to use this three typeface. Some people, not me, the one on the middle. But uh, Frutiger is... It looks a contemporary typeface. It's not the case with the BX from Citroën, who looks really uh, 90. So again, buy typeface and stop to buy car. I will sell mine uh, next week. Seriously. <laughs> um, and you can see even with Novarez, Aldo Novarez, I have done on his books, uh, some comparison with the shape of architecture on the, on the shape of the letter forms. You can see also that typeface can, can, can be better at, at, long, at long term. Even this one was called because of the, of the architecture of Brasilia. Uh, but uh, the typeface can be used for many other things that just Brasilia reference in the 60s. But there is a big difference between typeface and piece of architecture that we have, we have the help of the world. Um, I'm sure you came across type specimen in, in not your, your language, and you say, you open an Italian type specimen or a Spanish type specimen or German, whatever. You open it and say, yes, this typeface looks very Spanish, or this typeface looks very German. No, it's not the typeface with German or Swiss or whatever. It's that the text they use. The, the word can change um, the, the feeling of a shape of a typeface. A piece of architecture is probably the use of, of, of the building would change probably the connotation of the, of the design itself. But in case of the typeface, we have the words, and the words change completely. Uh, some of you have done logotype on piece of lettering, and sometimes a name of something, you are not able to design the same letters on, on another, one, another one, because the letter together produce certain image that it's impossible to adapt to some ideas. It doesn't work because you have this succession of certain shape. But the word, uh, the word help a lot to the meaning of the shape of the typeface because the, the, the shape of the typeface are completely uh, abstract thing. But when you use, you, you, you set word with them, it change completely. Um, Albert Einstein have done, um, he have a very good, very nice quote about that. Um, all typography uh, have to, to work on how we have to use it. It really is a visualization of the words, and the words are very useful for, for typography. It, it had a, a new dimension of that. It's what we have done with uh, Stefan Elbaz for, for Sephora in 2012, just using the element of the brand put on the typeface with a open type substitution, something like that. And suddenly, when you set a word, any words, you immediately see uh, Sephora. Um, I will come back to um, uh, an older and recent project it was for, for the Boston Consulting Group. 
This company, um, back before 2007, used uh, two typefaces. Again, Helvetica is there. Um, Baskerville, uh, the one um, not exactly by Matthew Carter. He told me I was on the building, so it's not by him, but he was there, so I have to change my slide one day. Um, he was on the building wha when Baskerville was designed. Okay, but you know, in some web page, people say it's by Matthew Carter. This typeface was done from very uh, high contrast, high size of Baskerville. It's very nice design, but for large size, not small. And then, you know, these people, uh, is not Helvetica, is Arial, but okay, whatever. Uh, this, this typeface was on the PC, and you know, this company suddenly have this PowerPoint thing, and they begin to use the typeface everywhere because it was there by default. But, but they came with, to this problem because the printed publication they do was set with Baskerville on the other side, you have Helvetica and the two doesn't work at all together. Um, they, they, they publish a, a big report in 300 page, two columns, 10, 11 point size, glossy paper, just imagine by Baskerville on it, it doesn't work at all. It's too small, it's too light, it, it, it doesn't work. So the first presentation was to say to them, We'll do a new, a new typeface, a new, um, a new Baskerville, but a Baskerville will be your Baskerville on a Baskerville with not the new Baskerville. Little strange what I'm saying. Uh, on, on these people are because they are the, uh, the, uh, uh, a big company like the Boston Consulting Group. Uh, author write um, and they want to be sure that there is will be no problem with authorship of the typeface. They, and they say to me, yes, but. This new typeface, it's not Baskerville, but it's Baskerville. And you say, yes, but it's not Baskerville. It's a new typeface in the style of Baskerville. So I begin to, to explain to them that Beethoven, when he, he, when he, he do his uh, symphony and things like that, nobody have records of the symphony. Nobody knows how the symphony was played at the time of Beethoven or Mozart, whatever. And today, when people, when a, a chief want to to, to do a concert with a symphony. His interpretation is different in the 60s, 70s, or because he's Japanese or German, French, Italian. The, the, it would be different bit of, so it would be not the same. So I have to explain to these people that we will do a new Baskerville, but it's not Baskerville, but still Baskerville. Uh, so in Baskerville, there is certain characteristics. You have especially the flat, uh, round shape on the top of the A or F quite open. It's sort of humanistic typeface, um, the end of humanistic typeface because it's quite open. Um, and there is certain characteristics that I wanted to keep with a very much bigger uh, X-site on low contrast because it was for small size. So the end is this typeface with even a little more of oblique axis because it worked better in small size for, for reading. And then we have done a contrast version who looks more in terms of contrast to the original Baskerville, and then um, the, the clients wanted to, uh, to have a sans serif, and that's what, why I love clients, because never in my life I, 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 I can imagine to do a Baskerville sans serif. Um, at the time, in even mid-2000, people doing a humanistic sans serif, or they doing grotesque sans serif, but not in between, very rarely. But clients need, suddenly they open a new doors and say, yes, you have to do something in between. So that my take on the Baskerville sans serif. At the end, the two typefaces work quite together uh, with the same, you know, the, the setting works together on even you can, uh, you can set text uh, with a different size, but you can set text uh, with a new typeface compared to Arial and the text uh, works the same without any change. For the, for the numeral, we have an, uh, uh, I've got an idea. It's to do something little like ITC Garamond. On ITC Garamond, you have uh, special numerals because the numerals are not completely aligned to the cap, but they are not all style. They are just in between, even not like Georgia typeface with in between, between caps, on, between small caps, on, uh, yeah, I, uh, larger small cap with between X height on the caps. On this one, you can see that they, they move a little bit, but not too much. That's, uh, by default numerals, because I think it was impossible to say to them, you will have by default all style numerals. So you have something little, slightly, very close, but not exactly. And then when you have, you apply the tabular lining numeral, you really have the numeral who, who match uh, the cap size. 
and after you have the reload all style also uh, more different and then for the sensor reef again it works the same thing I will not go through uh, all the version for the sensor reef um, two years ago they came to us and say we want a new typeface because we have new activities and we want to have a, a, a typeface fabulous completely different so I've done we have done several proposals and at, at some point say yes your new typeface is very beautiful but we'll take the most conservative version with just a slap slap serif version so the slap serif again is based on the sans serif with the serif but uh, with a little different contrast to be more open we we keep still a little bit of basque but not so much because the serif are so strong so it changes the, the feeling of the typeface um, when we design a typeface on, uh, it's very important to go through the, the family the, the, the company story to try to to see what we can we can find on the archive to be sure that the company voice is, is really present and reconstruct some things that people lost more, more or less because of marketing or they always push for the future and never look back on this company. So the idea for Vuitton is, was to design a set of a series of typeface we can mix together to do, uh, to do stationery. For the, um, the magazine in Spain um, called Madrid Magazine was also to design a typeface with in, 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 in the mix of something with like um, fashion magazine like Dido and things like that but also Spanish style when Dido doesn't exist in Spain. So it was a mixture of, of the D Dido bodony things and also the uh, Spanish atmosphere applied to a Dido. Again for Vuitton it was also a renovation of something you, uh, that they use at Vuitton since many years on their trunk, uh, handmade um, by hand letter, letters on, on the big trunk with a family uh, monogram and things like that. But here it was uh, an open type typeface with an automatic uh, substitution for the shadow because we don't have keyboard for the shadow specifically. For Georgian, there is a problem with, with access on keyboard, but for shadow, it doesn't exist yet. And I will not ask Unicode to add shadow on every piece of Unicode. It's not possible. Another typeface uh, we've done for Origin. It's a company in um, in um, in US. Um, and this one was the idea was to design something based on 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 the old Caslon, uh, but for his, with very very large size. I will not go through more on this this slide. And for uh, uh, Nespresso. Nespresso is not an Italian brand, but the, the world thinks it's a, that Italian. It's just a brewing Swiss company worldwide. Sorry for Swiss guy here. I love you and I, lo I love Helvetica still. <laughs> so when, when you have a new client, you have to say to the clients, okay, uh, it's like with your kids when you, you go to the garden, say, okay, um, uh, young boy, uh, you can play on this area, but never cross the line. If you go there, um, dad will be very uh, uh, upset against you. And with the clients, you have to act like that. You say, okay, clients are sometimes a little silly because they say, yes, this uh, competitor, uh, this shape is very beautiful. I want the same on my typeface. You know, it's like uh, the neighbor, uh, this car, I want the same car. Stupid. <laughs> uh, so I say to them, okay, the Nespresso typeface have to, uh, is on this Italian style. If you uh, bring to me an Helvetica things or whatever, I say, no, it's not Italian, it's Swiss, whatever. So I say, you, we, we have to be around that idea. Even the one here is not Italian. It's a Bon Marché, the one on, on the far on the button. It's not Italian at all, but they don't care. <laughs> Um, uh, Nespresso is it's a little strange company. It's not because it's Swiss. Uh, I don't care of that. But uh, the communication is Nespresso is based on, on technology, on design, on, on also the capsule for sure. It's easy to use. It's not savvy for an environment, but you can sell a lot everywhere in the world. And I, I don't drink coffee, so it's better to have a more distance with the product. My wife, Veronique, loves coffee, so she drinks two coffee at each lunch, not me. 
And uh, for this typeface, uh, the idea was to, to try to be more Italian because they still use Italian for the name of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the perfume of the, I lost the word, but the taste of the different kind of, of cafe they, they sell. Um, so it's why I wanted to have something more Italian to address this kind of feeling that the typeface have this kind of roots uh, with not at all on the, on the communication of, of Nespresso. The first use was at Champs-Élysées because he, the flagship store of Nespresso is based in, in, in Paris. And the real, um, the real use was uh, this uh, commercial with Georges Clunet and Jean Dujardin uh, who go to the, to, the, to the lake in north of Italy. And uh, everybody, everybody say, yes, Jean Dujardin is a new thing for the Nespresso commercial. And I say, no, that's a typeface. But nobody cares. <laughs> nobody has seen that. But Jean Dujardin is gone already. But the typeface is still there. So what I can say with that is, uh, as graphic designer, nobody see what we do. But what we do is everywhere in the world. So, but just imagine to be Jean Dujardin, uh, Georges Clunet as a graphic designer in the street, people address to you, why you choose Helvetica on this corporate identity? It's not good. Or why you select this, this, this color for this car, whatever. Just imagine, you are, when I take the metro sometimes, nobody complain about the typeface. Hey, you are Jean-François, you, you have done the Paris in typeface, it's not very legible. Or can I have a, a, an autograph or whatever? Yeah, they don't care. We are completely invisible for the people we work for or for the population we work for all the time. It's, it's, it's very um, a very good thing. Um, uh, in 2000, 2015, uh, we have done again um, looking to the archive of, of the shop of the, of the department store of Galerie Lafayette to see who they are exactly and try to find the right shape for, for them. Um, 120 years of history is not, it's, it's, it's a lot for a big shop like that. And even in the 60s, you have the tandem Peter Knapp and Jean Villemer, Swiss again in France, 60s, doing a new logotype. This one was, uh, it was it's a fun story because the new logotype in the, in the 60s, um, uh, this one was done by uh, Jean Villemer. Jean Villemer was, uh, was the young guy with uh, Peter Knapp, but Pete, Peter Knapp takes some holidays. And during the holidays, Jean, Jean Villemer have done the new logotype. Yes, <laughs> the Swiss together are very <laughs> sometime. Um, and then I, I tried to use this kind of reference to, do, to design a new typeface. It started with, with this typeface, the one on the middle. They wanted only this one on the, on the beginning. And then they said, yes, we want to have more. We, we need lowercase. We need more weight. And then I said, you need to have a serif typeface also because a department store uh, works like a magazine, but it's different. In a magazine, you are not able to purchase what you can see on it. But a department store, you can purchase what you can see immediately. So, but it works, it works the same, especially because a large department store sells anything. It can be uh, sneakers, it can be yeah, sport, it can be something for your home, it can be fashion. That's the center of, of really the, the core um, business of the department store. But you have to have this mixture of different kind of typeface to be able to address a different style or different department or different feelings to have a communication who is not completely flat but who change all the time because fashion change all the time. So at the end, we, are, we end up with this kind of family uh, why? Uh, yes, suddenly the, uh, this typeface, I, I don't have any serif anymore because a new advent, advert, I, advertising agency came into the game suddenly and they doesn't respect the rules so they begin to play outside of the square we try to draw in the beginning and say, yes, this typeface can be very much better without the serif. I try to battle um, against that but they succeeded. So I lost the battle, they removed the serif, I removed the serif, we removed the serif for them, and now they are this little strange combination of typeface. But what is interesting is when they launch a new typeface, that the Instagram of the boss of the, so the first thing, even before the logo type, was a typeface. He said, tonight we will announce the new, the new identity and he used a new typeface for that in a place where you have, uh, obviously, Parisian on the, on the metro station. The, the typeface is used everywhere, on publication, on signage, on the building, everywhere. Um, 
as a front, we, we have two activities. The craft is for, for um, custom fonts or lettering, things like that. And we never have any publication on the blog of Tipo Foundry about what we do as bespoke company um, design and things like that to separate the two activity. But we continue to publish typeface in the, sa in, in the same time to be sure that um, the two activity are clearly separate. Um, but sometimes the two activity um, mix together in certain way because some project, it happened to a lot of foundries, start uh, for a clients and suddenly you have to publish a typeface. But sometimes it takes a long time, like this one. It was done for the Baltimore Sun. On the Baltimore Sun at the time, it was when you have W. Bush as a president. And this guy who uh, attack Iraq uh, with his bombs, make a big problem everywhere in the world with his silly ideas. The most crazy president at the time, at the time. <laughs> now he's the second one on the list. <laughs> On, um, on the, you know, they, they changed the name of the French fry by freedom fry, something like that. But Democrat party on Democrat people outside uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the fringe of US wanted to say, yes, all Europe is still a nice place to go and we want to be different from our president. So they, want, they wanted to have a French Dido with different, with little different from what US uh, say to the world. It why they asked to, to design a typeface. So the typeface was done for light, large size, small size, in between size, whatever. And it was used on the newspaper for many years. And then, you know, newspaper in US, they closed all of them, more, more or less. So they stopped to use the typeface at some point. But we continue to expand the typeface through, uh, through many years. And we come back again more recently, in 2010, and then was, uh, um, it can be a, a variable font, but I, I'm not sure it works because it's a little more complex than what you can see. You have in black uh, the, the master on, on everything green are what we produce, but we have a lot of, uh, yes, a lot of special things to make the thing happening uh, cl clearly. So you have, for example, the person in small size and large size. And then you have also, as Matthew Carter did for, for Georgia in this case, to have in between uh, small caps quite big with uh, large numerals to fit the small caps too. And also try to be sure that the vertical matrix of Menken works very well with some of other of our typeface, Ardoise, Le Monde, and some other. So the vertical matrix works, but, but the style is very different and it's more an assemblage than you know, the super family concept. I have done that when I was young with Le Monde, but it's a really stupid idea. Matthew Carter was right in, to, in 96 when I interviewed him. And I asked, do you like super family? And he said, no, it's a really stupid idea. <laughs> I was ashamed because I have done Le Monde just at the time. But now, after a couple of years, I understood that it was a very bad idea. What is interesting, to, it's to keep certain metrics, but not the style and the structure, because when you set a text in serif typeface and you put a word in sans serif in the middle, nobody sees that it's a sans serif in the middle of serif. You need to have more difference, a weight or size or something like that, colors. But when you have really two different typefaces, it works much better. So the typeface was expanded, and we have uh, um, all the masters, the testing on, on start again. The typeface have to be launched last year, but we start again everything because yeah, intermediate something doesn't work, so we have to do a lot of testing or, or again to make the thing working. That's the writing of uh, Mathieu Reguet who was on the project with me. And then we have to test the typeface, the last checking. You see the, the feet of people, of the team, looking of, of every printout. Okay, in papers looks more finished than on screen, I don't know why. It's more tangible. And then we, uh, we, we, we sell a, a nice license to Variety. They have the, the version from last year, which is not completely perfect. We have to deliver a new version of it, but it worked quite nice on, on, the, on their magazine. And um, on this winter, we were quite ready to publish the typeface. So I asked Claudia Delmeida, um, who was the, the design director of Wired, and I love what, what she's doing. So she had to design a, um, a new specimen, and, and it was fabulous because suddenly it was on Trump era. So W was, you know, moved to second position, and, 
and Mencken was someone who, who wrote a lot of piece about uh, democracy and things like that. And when you read what he wrote in the 20s, it, it applied very much to Trump era. So the typeface was born with Bush, but was published with Trump. And look at what he wrote, it's fabulous. Yeah. Indeed, final inspection is done by Molly the Cat from the foundry. And um, the last part of the talk um, is to, co to come back to politics. I love politics because politics is life, especially since uh, Brexit and Trump. I think it's important to, be, to do something, not just to be uh, outside and go to vote on Sunday or whatever the day, depending on the country, and say, ah, oh, that's this stupid guy elected, have done nothing. But in 2012, uh, when uh, Francois Hollande, uh, we have a big expedition, but nothing goes through very well at the end. And uh, I was very proud because they select Le Monde Livre Classique for headline and say, yes, it's very nice, a new president, and things like that. But if I come back to US, um, in 2000, uh, every, everybody last year had this expedition to have Hillary Clinton uh, elected. And uh, Lucas Sharp have done a very beautiful typeface for this campaign as what they did at Pentagram and, uh, and after the team with Hillary, there, there was 40 designers working for almost a year for the campaign, for the identity and, ev and everything. And, and they use this typeface with not, it's sort of Futura, with not exactly like a Futura, but it's not like Gotham, it's something new. And, and this typeface was quite very effective, but suddenly they wanted to use another typeface. This typeface have to uh, begin to be used when uh, Hillary was, was appointed by the Democratic Party as a candidate. And they wanted to have a, a serif typeface, so they selected Pace Fournier. So happy to have uh, Hillary. It, she was the first, she was, I mean, the, the, the HQ was the first, uh, the first client of, of the Pace Fournier. The, the day was launched. It's quite fabulous. They, they, they purchased the typeface to set some code from her. To, be, to have a different voice. So you can see that the politicians have used a sans serif, very, very bold, very simple, and suddenly to have her voice more, more, more up, more on the top, she, she used a serif typeface. And back in um, a couple of, of uh, months after, I, I, um, I was already into the campaign of Emmanuel Macron, trying to do things locally. Um, try to, to, to say people vote for him and go to the street and say, yes, as a new president, you have to expect a, a, a big change. It was in November, December, January. And in March, I, I was called by um, an email, in fact, by the two art directors at En Marche um, HQ. And they, they asked me to come and say, you are a designer, you can do something for Emmanuel Macron with your, your skill. So you can, do some, you can do a piece of work. I was in, in uh, New York uh, a week before, so I have done uh, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité uh, with wood type in, in, um, in Brooklyn. So I bring that and I, I give one to Emmanuel Macron who was around, it was very quick. And then I have to design something to help uh, the, uh, the, the candidate, Emmanuel Macron. So I did that. Again, liberté, égalité, fraternité, because it, it means a lot to me as a French and many people in the world, it's the same kind of words. And then um, at the time, they used Gilson. It was a very nice choice because Gilson is quite dynamic, especially when they use the italic, is less boring that than Gotham that every political party used since uh, Obama. It was a very good choice for Obama, but they have to change sometime. And then, um, uh, I have, when I, I meet them, uh, I meet the two guys, I tell the story about Fournier and Hillary Clinton, and suddenly, after a couple of weeks, they come back to me and say, uh, yes, Jean-Francois, we need a serif typeface. Because the guild is nice, but uh, yes, what, what Hillary uh, have done is very nice. So we want to have the, the candidate more like a president. So I, I've done some tests for a couple of, of, in 30 minutes, something like that. I've set some things with a Menken typeface and few other. And I explained the story of the Menken with democracy and things like that. And they say, yes, Menken is fabulous. So we use a Menken typeface as a candidate. So it, it was used mostly on Twitter, on Facebook, social networks. But it was very, very good to have the typeface for a candidate that you like very much. 
And suddenly the pre he was elected president, so suddenly it was the typeface of the president. So he continued to use the typeface now. And so I'm so happy to see, to see my typeface with the word of the president I vote on. I have done a lot of things for, for make him elected. And even her offler, uh, Jonathan, sent me a, a tweet and say, you, you have to use, uh, <laughs> ah, Jonathan, <laughs> you have to use two, two of your typeface because it was the case with Obama. He used two of the typeface from, um, from uh, Jonathan. On me, it was only one. And he said, okay, welcome to the club. But I will say to Jonathan, I will answer to Jonathan that we are not on, on the same club because on your city, they still use Helvetica when in Paris, they, they use Paris. <laughs> and then, m more later, when, when they ask for the regular weight, I say, you need more weight. It was, you know, two months before. And say, one day you will use more weight. And, and suddenly, uh, they begin to use this black version or not, uh, heavy version. And look at that, they put ligatures. <laughs> you know a, a president who used ligatures on his quote? No, <laughs> only Emmanuel Macron, I mean the graphic designer. Nobody knows that they, they use that, but ligatures is quite nice. And then he begin to use English. But uh, we have some discussion on Telegram because that's the application we use to communicate. It's more, more private. So uh, they use a French, uh, no, the French spacing, but the English uh, quote. Uh, so th they put too much space, but they have to change that. And suddenly, th there was this tweet um, uh, a week ago. And this tweet was uh, the biggest tweet of the history of France, with a very nice message, uh, very smart, very clever against Trump. A few years after he have his, his talk to, the, to, to say he will remove from uh, Paris, um, yeah, whatever. So it was very, it was, it was very bad what Trump d did, but. But Macron was very like an, a new hope, like Obama and many others have been done before. And yesterday, even they launched a new website to ask people uh, with interest into the planet to, to be back in Europe. So um, now they, they use ligatures, and the ligatures are the, the by default standard at Palais de l'Elysée. Merci. Thank you.